All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Gilden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Randy Langendorfer, who is in Houston, Texas. How are you doing, Randy? Good afternoon, John. It's a pleasure to meet you and a pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, absolutely. Randy's the president of InvestArc Properties, focusing on creating investor value and passive income res returns for busy professionals. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is is passive income, because Randy, you work, uh, you're a real estate syndicator, and you particularly work with multifamily. So, I mean, let's go, let's get straight into it, right? Number one, I guess, from your from your own point of view, um, right now, is multifamily a a a difficult or a good place to be like is there are there properties available is there more properties coming on is this a hot area you know to be in in the first place that's a great question john and i think it, i think it is especially at certain parts of the country i think specifically in the sun belt to the southeast the southwest uh, across that region i think it's a great place to be in not that you can't make money in in other parts of the country but that is where mm -hmm. you see the population growing and you see a lot of income growth as well two major major um, elements that we look for when we're acquiring properties is population growth and income growth. And just like your, you know, your primary residence today, all real estate is going up and, you know, is it the best time to get in? Well, I guess I would, I, I like the cliche that, you know, when's the best time either 20 years ago or today. Yeah. Uh, I'm always a buyer. It's just a different, uh, just a different aspects and different methods. Mm -hmm. So has has uh, as as property prices have increased in single family homes, you know, particularly in some areas, you know, it can be hard to come by. And that have you seen? Have we seen growth in in multifamily, or is it still? I mean, are people choosing to go to multifamily as opposed to go trying to always go for a single family home? Well, I think you'll see we're seeing changing demographics across the country. Uh, I think many of the the people that are the millennial age group have great incomes. They may not have an income, or I should say a balance sheet to afford a down payment for a house today. Mm -hmm. and, and that drives them to a multifamily space. They also generally like to live in the urban core areas, you know, where they can walk to the grocery store or the nightclub activities or other things. And then you see another major changing demographic, uh, the boomers, such as uh, myself, who are aging out of their you know, their houses, their McMansions, as I've heard it referred mm -hmm. to, and wanting to downsize into something smaller with no maintenance and and just, you know, pay a monthly income, a monthly fee, which they have a very nice living accommodations. And it's it's uh, a changing demographic across America. And interest rates, certainly, uh, the rising interest rates certainly aren't helping people purchase uh, primary mm -hmm. single family residence either. And and just uh, and one other quick question: What is it? What is it like in terms of uh, new properties? Is there a lot of build? Is there a lot of building activity in parts of the country? Uh, a lot of multifamily building activity going on. Well, you guessed it. The, there certainly is. You know, Houston. I'm in Houston, and an average mm -hmm. year for Houston, an average year is like uh, twelve to fourteen thousand new units coming on each and every year, and there's, you know, an alleged, not alleged, there is a documented housing shortage across America. Anybody, any place from three to five million units across the country, they say we're, we're light on. We need housing for people and affordable housing. Uh, another macro driver making apartments, uh, multifamily space uh, escalate as well. Mm -hmm. So on the investment side, so if I'm, if I'm in a, if I'm in a, just a regular Joe, a regular John. There you go. If I'm just a regular John, go. which I am, um, what, why, why would um, multi investing in multifamily be a good idea for me? Like working perhaps with somebody like yourself, work um, to get into multifamily, and can I get in? Are there different levels I can get in? Because I think sometimes people hear this and they think, well, well, I don't, I can't afford to get into something like that. I can't afford to own apartments or whatever. So, are there different levels to get in? And is this a good in? Is this a good investment even for maybe you know people who haven't dipped their toe in this market ever before? Yeah, I, I believe it is. And I just tell a quick story. I got into it um, about eight, nine years ago when I was looking to develop a passive income, another income stream other than mm -hmm. my primary job. So I'm still actively employed. 
uh, in the medical center in Houston, Texas. And I tell people that about eight, nine years ago, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio market. And I realized the company I was working for was going to be sold. And like many people, I was soon going to be out of a job. And with all of my nest egg tied up in my employment, uh, the income, I did not have any diversification strategy at the time, is when I really got into thinking about developing a passive income stream. So what's a passive income stream? That's just simply where you invest and you're going to see a monthly return uh, and you are going to get hopefully appreciation on the back end. So the reason we we invest in, in commercial real estate and why we like multifamilies because it has uh, favorable tax treatment. So you get preferential tax treatment on your on your W on your um, tax return. You get forced appreciation. Uh, commercial real estate is is valued on the on the cash flow it generates, mm -hmm. as opposed to the comps in your neighborhood for your single family residence. And then lastly, uh, you get a, you get a nice cash flow, you know, hopefully over the life of the asset. And uh, those are the three primary reasons why I encourage people to look at uh, multifamily or commercial real estate. Cash flow, forced appreciation, favorable tax treatment. And I've never found that in the stock market um, primarily. So those three is where I think it's it's volatile, but it's not as volatile as the stock market. Right. It's based, these, these types of investments are based on hard assets, buildings, mm -hmm. bricks and mortar versus pieces of paper. So I, I think right. that's the attractive thing for a lot of people. So talk me through what are the what are the different ways that you can get involved? I mean, if you just wanted to dip your toe in the market, I mean, um, what are the what are the um, what are the investments that 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 you offer? I mean, is it is it just fractionally buying into a, a building or is it sure. individual units? What are what are the different types of, of ways you can go about this? So there are, there's two primary ways. I mean, the way I started out was when I nine years ago, and the way I think most people should at least think about it, engaging their level of interest into it, is to pass to, to develop a passive uh, investment. So a passive investment, what's that mean? Well, that becomes you. It means you become a limited partner in a, an LLC that owns apartment X Y Z, and mm -hmm. you own a percentage of that, just like you would. Uh, a mutual fund or something else based upon uh, the amount of money you put in it. So, right. you know, if you had, if we have to raise a million dollars, uh, the typical investment is $50,000. It can be less, can be less. So your percentage of ownership is going to be X divided by a million dollars uh, is what your percentage ownership is going to be in that asset. And it's really just that simple. So, right. and you, and you're coming along for the ride, you're relying upon, the expertise of myself or my my colleagues who do this as well to identify assets and you know it's it's one of the wonderful things because everybody needs a place to live mm -hmm. in a downturn uh it's not like i can do without my iphone if i have to <laughs> but i'm not going to be a caveman and find a cave to live in <laughs> Uh, I can sell you a tent if you need it. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that's really, so what kind of then, what kind of, because uh, it's always good, obviously, you, you obviously need to set ex expectations on, on sure. what that passive income is going to look like. So what is that, what can that look like uh, over time, like on a monthly basis? What kind of returns are you looking at? So the way we the way we model our my investments at, at Investark Properties is is we we try to identify assets where we can provide investors uh, anywhere is between a six and a nine percent cash on cash return each and every year. So mm -hmm. if you invest, let's just say if you invest a hundred thousand dollars, you're going to get six thousand dollars back to nine thousand dollars, and then over these are usually modeled over a five year right. pro forma, and at the end of five years we would hope to um, one it's about a 14, 15% IRR internal rate of return, or that means that I would uh, have an equity multiplier of 1.7 to 1.9. So that means if you put in $100,000 over a five-year period, we'd, we'd give you back total investment, $170,000 to $190,000. Right. So that, that's a pretty decent return. And, and uh, uh, I'll take that personally all day, every day. <laughs> I've been doing this. I've been doing this for eight years now, as I said, and I would say that I'm averaging 160% return on my investments. So, and it's not because I'm the smartest guy in the block or the brightest crayon. 
It's because of the asset class. As mm -hmm. I said, real estate is always rising generally. Well, it's always rising over a period of time. You may have had the 08 and 09 crisis in the in the uh, single family space, but even then, oh, you yeah. only saw multifamily go down about three percent. So yeah, it's and, and safe even, investment. Yeah, and even depending on location and that, like even the single family uh, housing market bounce back. Extreme, you know, didn't just bounce back in some areas, like in the San Diego area, it didn't just bounce back. It it just kept bouncing forward and it's now a upward. ridiculous upward ridiculous um ridiculous level so um but there, there also it appears that there is seems to be a lot of um shall we say legislative or political push around multifamily too so is that also benefiting um benefiting this market well i think so because as i mentioned there's a there's a documented housing shortage across mm -hmm. the us and so the government the government backs uh, these types of investments, and so the the agencies that consist of Fannie uh, and Freddie, uh, Fannie mm -hmm. Mae and Freddie Mac uh, lending organizations really support these large investments uh, in these types of properties, multifamily properties, and so they have attractive lending terms that really are kind of the gold standard for us to to obtain, and so the regulations are primarily in that area, and then obviously each locality has different regulations for mm -hmm. their um, tenant laws. You know, some states are very landlord friendly. Other states are very tenant friendly. Right. Um, uh, I've heard that in California, it's very tenant friendly. In Texas, it's very landlord friendly. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't pay, we can generally have them removed fairly quickly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Texas likes to keep things simple. California likes to <laughs> keep things complicated. <laughs> I think that may be it. Um, and then, and then, so if um, so, I mean, you mentioned earlier about you know maybe fifty thousand investment. That's from from your fund. But can people get in at a lower rate if they want, and that, you know if they just wanted to test the the water, or is it kind of a case of you need to have a little, you know, a, a decent investment for it to really pay off for you? Well, you, you have to have a decent, decent investment, but there are there are some ways to get around that fifty thousand dollar hurdle. Some of them go down to as low as twenty five thousand. Many of them are a hundred thousand dollar minimum. But I think the I first got in it by um, because I was very reluctant. I'm a finance uh, accounting professional in the background, in my background, I should say. And so the way I got around it was getting another friend, and we formed a trust to accumulate. Mm -hmm. Both of us together had fifty thousand dollars to put in this in one of these assets. Or you could have two or three or some people form an LLC to do the same thing that uh, to get around that hurdle. And um, and if you know a sponsor, if you know somebody putting the deals together uh, like myself or others, I mean, they'll, they'll let they'll generally let you in the first time or in for less. Um, mm -hmm. I got my my daughter in one for a substantial less uh, it's because she was obviously family. But yeah. it, it had to, it'd have to be a relationship that you, you need to really nurture. But. Mm -hmm. The returns are really, um, really beneficial. Yeah, and then um, as you said, I mean, it's a passive, it's a passive income. So you're just kind of putting your investment, in, uh, and uh, so what? What? Um, how do you track it, and what? What? What information do you supply, you know, yeah. to the to the investors so that they can feel comfortable with their investment, not just the, you know, the the, the payout that comes in. Well, it's not. It's not uh, give Randy fifty thousand and never see him again. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so your listeners, let me tell them that that is not the case. So I would say the uh, John, what we do is is we produce monthly reports to the investors, updates of how the property is going. We we tell them the business plan. I mean, when the investment is being formed, we have a webinar. We go over the business plan, the financing, the how we're going to generate more cash. Uh, we produce monthly reports, as I indicated, to the investors, mm -hmm. telling them what we're doing, how we're progressing, any setbacks we're encountering. Uh, and then we send out quarterly distributions. That's when we pay out the investors right. quarterly. Uh, we have taken over a couple properties recently, and then we'll have another video webinar six months into it because we're getting people from all across the country coming into these. And the webinar allows them to have face-to-face -face contact like this to actually talk to the sponsorship team and and ask questions, and so we certainly want to do that. And then and then lastly, um, you know, from the tax side, every every February, March, you're going to get a K one 
which is uh, a share of the partnership, your share of the partnership's return for tax purposes. And uh, th that's really how it goes. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And we make ourselves available to investors so they can ask questions and feel comfortable. Obviously, we want repeat investors. So uh, we want to take the time and get people comfortable. We've got them all across the board. I've got investors that were um, one investor that's a very high net worth individual, uh, many millions of dollars. And another investor I was just talking to for the most recent acquisition was a former missionary coming back from the yeah. mission field. And she inherited some money. And I said, I was really trying to be very overly cautious, trying to make sure she was comfortable with a, a long term investment. And she's, mm -hmm. you know. She was, and she just didn't want to put it in the market and be vol the volatility yeah. of the market and saw it as much more uh, conservative. And like I said, I mean, one of the obviously great advantages of this and working with somebody like yourself is that, as you said, you can be anywhere in, in the country. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to, you don't need to live in the locale where the, where the asset is. You don't need to understand that market is why you obviously work with folks like yourself. Um, but that's obviously a, a, a massive advantage now for people is that they can invest in real estate like this, but without ever setting foot in the, uh, in the local. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I go and visit each of the properties we buy and I get there sure. r fairly routinely. What I'm, a, I'm a passive investor also in many deals uh, of other people's. And so I, before I passively invested, when I first started out, I, I went and visited the asset. I toured the actual, building and the surrounding comps, et cetera, for, for the multifamily unit. Uh, now that I have a relationship with, with some of the sponsors who are putting the deals together, I, I look at the paperwork and if I'm comfortable with what I see and things I like, uh, I no longer travel to every asset, put it that way, because that can be mm -hmm. time consuming yeah. and expensive, but it's a great way to get into Sunbelt in different areas. Like I just offered a deal in uh, Greenville. So I live in Houston. I just offered a partner with a group in, in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, another group in Tucson, Arizona. So mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for investors to see those growth markets like that, that you may otherwise never get a chance. Yeah. So what are some of those just, um, what are some of the other really uh, hot markets right now at the top of your head? Just the locales yeah. that are really looking you, good. Uh, you, if I were coaching your investors, mm -hmm. I would I would label it the Sun Belt. And so I think on the West, you get the Arizonas, the Phoenix, the Tucsons, you get uh, Texas, the big four in Texas, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, and continuing to move east. It's the uh, the Florida, the Tennessees, the North and South Carolinas are, are very, um, very growth oriented as well. It's seeing a lot of population as well as income growth. Those are those are the major markets I, I look at it. Now I'm, I'm also not to offend anybody from my friends from the Midwest because I'm from the Midwest. So I passively invest in Midwest deals, but I know, mm -hmm. I know the sponsors very well, and I know right. the markets very well to have that comfort level in doing it. If your if your listeners are are comfortable with that with the person or the locale, maybe you like I don't know Kansas City or Oklahoma City, right? Or anything in between, Chicago. Um, I'm not saying those don't work. I'm just saying you remove one risk factor by looking at those southern states that have growth and income population. Yeah. And I think as well as it's it's, it's probably fair to say that we're probably I mean I don't have any statistics. I actually meant to look it up recently, but we I think we're seeing a lot of uh migration now like of people moving moving into places um before they um people moving into locations that perhaps they haven't moved into before. So, I mean, or they're more akin to moving uh, around the country. And again, often when people move, they, the first place they move into is apartments. Yeah, and they say that, you know, the, the Texas of today is what uh, California was uh, 40 years ago. It is you know, right. a mass migration of, of people to Texas. Uh, you know, I, I'm from Ohio, I said, and they said, I live in one county Fort Bend County on the southwest side of Houston. And they said last year alone, there were like 75, 80,000 people moving to that wow. county alone. New development, new houses, new everything. And so um, that's, that's, that's uh, just a demographic you can't fight. Yeah, exactly. So this has been fantastic. Thank you, Randy. All of Randy's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your work. 
Well, I appreciate that, John. It's been a pleasure. And so Randy Langender for Houston, Texas, uh, president of InvestArt, InvestArt Properties. So you'll see it in the show notes. Easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, go to my webpage and there's a contact uh, form on there. It's invest, I-N-V-E-S-T hyphen arc, A-R-K dot com, invest hyphen arc uh, dot, dot com. And uh, follow me on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'd love to chat with you uh, if you have any interest at all talking about uh, real estate. Perfect. Um, listen, thanks again, Randy. Thank you for watching and listening. Fascinating. If you're looking for a, if you're looking for a passive investment, uh, go check out Randy and Randy's uh, work. Sounds like a great opportunity if that's the right uh, investment profile for you. Uh, again, thanks, Randy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you.